Good afternoon everyone. I take the pleasure in welcoming you to this wonderful gathering. I take privilege in welcoming the head of the department, Dr. Subha, my resource person, Mr. Anand Patmanabhan, respected faculty members and my dear mates. This is Anandama Ji of 3rd CACE, who will utilize every single moment of this event. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imagination and instill a love of learning. I am happy to call such person Ms. Jay Prada, Assistant Professor, Computer Science Department to felicitate the gathering. Good afternoon all. On behalf of Department of Computer Science and Engineering, I have the great pleasure to welcome you all for the webinar on Professional Resume Essentials. I welcome our beloved HOD ma'am who paved the way for this program. Welcome you ma'am. I am happy to welcome our uh, chief guest of this event, Mr. Ananta Padmanabhan sir, who accepted our invitation in spite of a very busy schedule. Welcome you sir. Thank you. Finally, finally I welcome, uh, thank you sir. Finally, I welcome my dear students for this webinar. It is uh, truly an excellent opportunity my dear students for you all. Uh, so kindly make use of it. Thank you all. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Every human success should be an inspiration to another. With special excitement that I am pleased to welcome our inspiration, Dr. Subha, Head of the Department, CSE, to share us her words. Thank you, MC. Okay. Um, good afternoon, students. I uh, hope you are all doing good. Okay, so today we have a session on a professional resume essentials. First, I will uh, give you the background picture of this session. Uh, some 10 days back, actually, I had a, a request from a company regarding student interns. So, there was a requirement for student interns. So, like I contacted our placement coordinator and I got few resumes uh, to give them a student uh, interns. But uh, unfortunately, after seeing the resumes, I found that the resumes are not up to the standard of the industry, up to the expectations of the industry. Though our students have done so many things, so many great things that was not reflected properly in the resume. So then later, uh, I wanted to check the resumes of other students also. When I verified the other resumes, I, I came to know that most of the resumes, they had only similar contents. So then we thought that we have to conduct, we have to do some resume verification exercise and we have to improve the standard of our resume. So for that purpose, actually uh, last week we had a class committee meeting, hope other members of the group also know. We had a class committee meeting and during the meeting we had a point on this, we had a discussion on this and it was agreed that we will do a three stage resume verification. So the first stage of verification will be done by the students. The second stage will be done by the faculty and the third stage uh, will be done by the industry mentor. Then the students also requested for a resume writing session because like since uh, they are new to this exercise, they don't have a clear idea how a resume should be. They wanted to conduct a session, exclusive session for this. So that is the reason today we are organizing a session on resume writing. Okay. So before, I, I think we, you all, you have your resumes in your hand, uh, but most of the cases, in most of the cases, I find that the resumes are very um, mere documents. They don't have much, much uh, they don't have much to convey about yourself. So that is one main reason, main objective of conducting this webinar. So from my side also, I have few points to be shared. I think this is a nice platform where I can share my views also regarding this resume writing. See, one thing that you have to remember in your mind, you should have in your mind is, uh, your resume is an ever-changing document. It is not a static document. So now you are in the process of fetching a job, you have written a resume, and throughout your career, you will be uh, changing roles in the same organization or in a different organization. Every time you have to write resumes, Okay, so the resume should be a very open document and you can think yourself as a product which is ready for sale. The company, you are going to sell yourself to a company. So when a product is ready for sale, there should be a proper pamphlet highlighting the features of the product. So your resume is a kind of the, that document. Okay, it is a kind of pamphlet document that should highlight your unique selling features. 
but do you think your resumes actually reflect who you are i don't think so after seeing your resumes i feel that your resumes don't reflect who you are so that is one aspect you have to take into consideration while writing a resume then next important aspect is your uh, resume should reflect your profile unless you develop yourself unless you develop your skills unless you update yourself definitely you cannot have a good resume so if your profile is good your resume can be good if your profile is not good if you are a very if you have a very very average profile then definitely you cannot write a good resume so more concentration should be given to profile building so i think our speaker will today cover on profile building also so you if you if you have a very good profile if you have a very interesting profile very captivating profile definitely that can be reflected in your resume and uh, always people will want you want uh, to have you in their organization so that is one thing which is very very important so profile building then always have in mind when it comes to resume from your side that is the only document that you are preparing so that is the only document which is available with you but when it comes to the side of the interviewer on a daily basis day in and day out he is seeing nearly 100 resumes so it should not be one resume should not be a copy of the other so do not follow any conventional method you follow a unique method you have a unique resume okay you try to project everything whatever skills you have whatever good things you have you try to project everything in your resume make your resume very very attractive to the people who sees your resume it should not be a boring exercise for them to read go through your resume okay so that is one thing which is very very important and also you can uh, customize your resume because there is no standard format right so do, it is not like there is no standard format certain formats you can customize see if you feel that your academic grades are very low don't then don't try to project it exactly on your resume if you have only 5.56 as your academic profile don't give it you can just give first class with graduation and don't use bold fonts for your uh, areas of weaknesses if you are not good in academics don't use bold font for academics if you are good in uh, mobile app development then you can add more lines on mobile app development so again it depends from person to person so based on your skills based on your profile you have to you have to write a resume do not copy or do not follow this resume which your friend has written he is he is a different individual you are a different individual okay so have everything in mind and remember that resume is one document which projects yourself which projects your capabilities which projects your image to the interviewer with that point in mind try to write a resume and do not make any silly mistakes like grammar mistake um, spelling mistake this will this will only uh, pull down the image of the candidate so having all these things in mind you can uh, just start writing your resume i think this seminar will help you how to know what are the different components of a professional resume and today i am very happy that uh, one of my former student mr ananta patmanavan is here he will be sharing his experience uh, regarding this and he will be giving you some inputs uh um, regarding resume writing and uh, anyhow the mc will be sharing the detailed profile of ananda patmanabhan so from a teacher's point of view so from my point of view i'll share so uh, he was my student for 3 years uh, so definitely i can share some good i, I have uh, very good memories about him so uh, one point which i like to share with you all is he is a kind of person who has a technical knowledge as well as hr skills because in today's uh, world today's competitive world technical knowledge alone will not be sufficient many of you i, I can say most of you you are technically very very competent uh, but uh, unless you improve your hr skills unless you improve your managerial skills it is very difficult to climb up in the ladder career ladder so that is one aspect which is very very important and he is one person who can rightly balance between these two uh, i can uh, um, from my memory what i remember is like see now there are around 250 students in the department in the third year out of this 250 only 3 to 4 students you you actually you have uh, you interact very closely with the faculty you interact very closely with me though we share a common vision so though myself faculty and students though we share a common vision you have certain inhibitions because of the difference in ideologies because of the difference in thought process because of the generation gap you don't come forward to interact with us very closely right 
So this situation is there across everywhere. But there are few students who come forward who can balance between their friends, who can balance between the relationship with the students as well as the relationship with the teacher. And he is, Ananda Padmanabhan is one kind of student. While he was a student, he was actually uh, very close with the students. At the same time, he was able to maintain good uh, rapport with the faculty also. It is actually, it is very difficult because these two are two different groups. And men management is the most difficult thing in the world, in my point of view. And if you know how to manage people, your personal life, your career life, your professional life, everything will be very successful. And you can learn that skill right from college. So don't concentrate, you have to concentrate on technical aspects. But more than that, concentrate on um, life skills like this, like how to improve relationship with people. So especially in an institution, how to improve the rapport with the faculty. So I think he will be a, a good uh, example for you in that matter because during that time with all of the faculty, not only myself, with all the other faculty also he had a good, good rapport. He was able to maintain, he was able to strike a balance between that. Uh, so that is one thing which comes into my mind when I think about uh, him and he used to be a very, very obedient student. Even today, uh, I think with the same the same respect, uh, he, he um, we used to communicate uh, and uh, he has a lot of uh, good memories there and uh, always he is very happy to uh, cherish them. So I am, I am from my side, I am very happy to have him in our campus. Uh, though it is virtual, still it is our campus. Uh, so over to you. Thank you, uh, MC. Over to you, MC. Thank you, ma'am. I am convinced that nothing we do is more important than hiring and training people, says Lawrence Bosley. And time spent on hiring is time well spent, says Robert Huff. So here we have Mr. Ananda Batmanabhan, HR software professional, has a work experience in the IT industry. He has worked with MNCs like Cognizant, HCL Technologies previously. He has completed his master's, PGDM in HR Marketing in DST Institute of Management, Coimbatore, and finished his bachelor's, BD Computer Science and Engineering from Sri Krishna College of Technology, Coimbatore. He has undergone a cross border entrepreneurship program with the University of Nottingham in Malaysia in 2019. He is an active member of organizations like CPD, HPR License Review, and World Vision India. I hereby welcome you to give your work, sir. Thank you. Now, oh, can we start the session? Hello. Sir, your voice is audible, sir. Uh, you can go ahead. So, is my voice audible? Yes, yes, you are you are audible okay. and visible. You are audible and visible. Yeah. Uh, so initially, uh, like uh, just before entering the session, uh, I should thank uh, yeah, like give me salutations to uh, Dr. Shubha Madam. Uh, she, I asked Madam was saying like specific memories that she had uh, when I was studying in my college, uh, like. But the one thing that I would be very happy when I talk about uh, Dr. Shuru Madam is that uh, uh, she was the professor for me like teaching uh, the uh, theory of computation and the computer architecture like in my uh, UG level studies and uh, moreover she was uh, the professor for uh, like uh, in computer department even for my uh, elder sister so uh, like she has taught both, uh, both my sister and also me like when we are studying in that UG level. And uh, so it, it is a, a very great uh, pleasure to actually be in an event where the madam is also there. And I thank uh, uh, Jayaprada madam also for coordinating this session and also for other coordinators. They have helped me to actually uh, arrange this session. So I uh, give thanks to them and uh, I thank all the students. So I will start the session. I hope that uh, it's, a, it's visible to everyone, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah. so today's session is more into uh, resume writing and uh, like what the companies are expecting with regards to your profile. And Ram was touching around that uh, resume has 
certain formats, uh, but uh, individual profiles matters a lot. So I'll just give you a specific preview of uh, like what is to be expected within your resume. Maybe there are other programs also that in the college level that you are also undergoing where uh, they are giving special training for uh, doing this resume writing. But from my experience of working in an industry and uh, like being in HR and uh, specific companies uh, with technical requirements, uh, being in software engineer previously, uh, I'll just give you uh, specific details of what is expected out of a student from an entry level. So going forward in your career, if you're working experience level professionals, their way of writing resumes or uh, uh, their way of communicating their work experience might be a little different. But uh, there is a, a certain structure where if you appeal yourself in front of a, a HR or a recruiter, uh, uh, that would actually give you the job initially. Why? Because uh, there is one specific saying that I can say when we talk about resume. Uh, even before a candidate goes for an interview, uh, uh, like the resume is going in front of him. So reason being like rather than you going uh, like talking to a HR or a technical manager for an interview, your resume is speaking in, in place of you when they see it as a, a soft copy or a hard copy. So uh, as an unknown person now like talking as an MC now you know a little bit about me. So uh, the MC would have given you idea like what I am uh, about and what was my previous experience. So I can relate that the same thing is applicable where if, even if I am not visible in a video you can actually correlate that uh, when we talk about the resume. So in that way resume is very essential. So even before you going for an interview it is speaking for you. So ensure that uh, like you make it in a very crisp and uh, uh, specific details uh, when you are mentioning that in the resume. So um, there is a specific difference between resume and cover letter. So generally like on a uh, terminology print people will say it as a resume. So it is a resume uh, just for indication and uh, there, is, there is a specific term as uh, CV, curriculum vitae. So there is a specific difference in that but in Indian perspective uh, resume and CV are interchangeable. Like some companies uh, would prefer resume, some companies will prefer CV. So, uh, but there is a structural difference when we uh, talk about it and there is, uh, when, when you are entering the details, uh, uh, there is uh, differences when we uh, portray it. And I give you samples like what, what are the differences when you write a resume and what are the differences when you write a, a curriculum detail like going forward in the session. So resume is actually a concise document that is like written in a single page. So always remember that it is uh, a specific details of your own uh, like career experience what you have and uh, the publications or the projects what you underwent and about your personal profile. If it is consolidated and put it in a single document uh, that is called as uh, resume. And uh, the specific uh, um, like theme behind the single page document is that uh, generally a recruiters like uh, it's more of a, a proven uh, fact that uh, 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 an average person takes only 6 seconds to actually go through the resume. So just imagine to what degree a person will give interest regarding your profile. So unless otherwise you are not uh, uh, clearly mentioning the details without any errors. Uh, like maybe uh, grammatically or also uh, the detail wise errors that which you are mentioning uh, like it will as madam was referring previously the other person will get bored uh, like seeing your details so it is not just only a cgps 8.4 or 9 that doesn't it has a bearing at an entry level but it is more of the profile what you are doing over a course of time that reflects for the hr or recruiter to uh, prefer you comparing to the x or y in the uh, queue that which they are waiting so this is about resume and uh, this is just a uh, like a sample where I will show you real time samples. So just for an idea I have just put this. I hope that this will be visible for you. Uh, so generally the um, basic details regarding your contact details you would have mentioned at the uh, top of that. Uh, like the you know, below the footer and the below to that uh, professional summary. So at an entry level you will generally mention the uh, career objective. Maybe for an experienced professional, they will mention the career summary, which is the industry that which they have done, and uh, uh, what are some uh, relevant experience that they have in their domain that which they are working on. So they, that they will mention here, and uh, into uh, core qualifications uh, like uh, related to uh, your certifications, like what you are doing with regards to the platform in which you are working. Say, for an example, if you are into a development site. Uh, doing a Java development or a Python development kind of uh, external certification will had uh, will have a 
very good impact and if you're doing say testing kind of a platform work then uh, you can mention it as ISTQB. ISTQB is a very famous certification uh, like who knows uh, under the software testing kind of a profile. So those things you will mention here and academic qualification obviously uh, like your uh, uh, like AG and PG level kind of a uh, um, uh, like program what you have done uh, under uh, which place and which uh, institute you are doing and as ma'am uh, said earlier there is a key point that she mentioned uh, it is always better that uh, if you are having uh, say 70 plus or say 7 plus it is good to actually mention the mark there uh, so below to that it is generally not advisable to mention it it is not to show discrepancy between people but the problem is that uh, like say if there are two resumes that if I am holding in left and right hand and if I see say 60 60 person in one person and other 80 85 person uh, my first gut is that I will see okay logically 85 person uh, like uh, CGPA or uh, percentile that uh, a person is having he is better than this X person so that comparison will creep into my mind so don't generally uh, like allow that to happen from an external point of view so from your side it is better that if you are having a decent CPC uh, sorry uh, a, a decent uh, mark where you can actually project uh, to the uh, external person you can mention say 7.5 or 8 or 8 plus uh, like specific uh, mark so even round up value don't generalize it say some I have seen some uh, people like who have mentioned that uh, 8.765 as uh, 9 it doesn't have any logic see 8.765 the decimal value you can mention it as 8.77 you can't mention it as 9. There are people who are uh, taking that rather than decimal value, they are just uh, uh, entirely changing the uh, before numeral value. So don't do these things. The, the reason being, once you are uh, like having the background verification process like post uh, at the time of uh, post selection and once the author is released, uh, uh, when you uh, like illustrate your documents in your 10th, 12th or even at the UG level, uh, there is a specific team like the BGU team from all companies that they will see everything. Even the roll number mismatch are creating many issues uh, uh, currently with uh, many companies and uh, they are revoking the offer. Revoking in sense they are declining that offer. So at any point uh, be ethical in whatever you do. Like in a way that if you mention uh, even it is a less mark that is different, that is okay. But uh, be true to the credentials what you are mentioning in the resume that is very essential and uh, uh, other than that uh, one specific uh, thing like uh, here for this resume if you could see uh, experience doesn't have any value right? because you are at entry level so you can't mention that and uh, below to that there is a section called uh, references so like if you have any uh, relevant uh, industry person working in any IT company where if you just want to mention their uh, name and uh, contact number you can actually mention it but it is your own wish to actually mention that so yeah uh, talking about uh, curriculum detail so curriculum it is something where uh, it is more than two pages uh, so generally like at an institutional level where uh, uh, like uh, once you are carrying forward for your uh, like say next year I hope that all people are uh, like with regards to students now you are listening you are in the third year of your studies so possibly next year uh, like you will be undergoing the uh, like final placements uh, so at that time generally uh, like CV is the preferable format uh, for colleges but uh, it depends like you can actually have one resume and one CV so like uh, which is uh, good and if you feel which is appealing there for the company or if there is a structure process where ma'am can guide you whether to produce CV or resume to the company so they will give you guidance for that I will just give you the differences so CV as I said it is more than two pages that which you mentioned uh, CV is something where if you have more credentials of doing certifications and publications and you have many uh, uh, like volunteer organizations that you have taking place and you are uh, doing some work uh, externally uh, like mentioning those details more than two pages format uh, would actually be uh, very pleasing to the person who is seeing so from an outside uh, looking in he will find it that uh, yeah this guy has so much potential where uh, uh, like he has done external work to a very great extent so once we hire him uh, to what degree he is technically sound unless the XRV person once he is put in a uh, real time environment we can't judge to what degree he is capable but uh, seeing that uh, template of what you have done uh, maybe over the last three years and uh, uh, like the internship program as uh, Shubham was referring uh, that uh, like the specific projects what you are undergoing so those things if you would have given some detailed description that will give even more uh, like appealing factor once you under, uh, like go before an interview.
So as I said, these are the specific differences. Resume is specifically short and it is highly customizable and it is uh, for just for only one page. CV is like, uh, it uh, gives you a span of your career, say though for uh, uh, more than uh, two pages. And uh, the specific countries where CV is very much uh, uh, like applicable is that uh, uh, in UK, Ireland uh, and New Zealand, they generally uh, like people who are going for an interview, uh, they carry CV and companies also prefer that and uh, resume is very, very specific uh, in places like uh, US and Canada. So even down the lane for an on-site opportunity uh, like that which you are ap uh, applying say for GRE and for other kind of programs, uh, uh, just uh, have a thought that uh, analyzing these countries like US and Canada they prefer resume. So uh, generally uh, have a format like that even if you are going for a master's kind of a program and uh, CV is something where uh, the other countries like uh, UK, Ireland, New Zealand and all they prefer. And uh, talking about uh, countries where uh, it is interchangeable or anything is applicable is uh, like uh, Australia, India and South Africa. So it is not like company specific. As I said, you can actually have two different formats. You can have it ready in hand uh, in whichever format that you feel good and uh, based on say the uh, college criteria what they are asking accordingly you can uh, give it to them. So, so these are the specific countries where uh, they uh, resume and CV is interchangeable. And uh, just to give you some uh, like different types for your knowledge and saying, uh, so see, it is not only for just entry level professional, wherever you are working, even as I said, for going for a master's kind of a program, you need your resume and uh, you should know what is about it and what are the different types that which you are actually applying for and even it is very specific once you are at a work level uh, timeline. The reason being uh, as there is so much competition comparing to an entry level professional uh, in a workplace uh, because the number of questions are very less for specific domains uh, in companies. So once you say climb the ladder in the third year or fifth year or seventh year, uh, these are some specific things even like uh, whether you consider it as important or not, uh, the recruiter or the HR from say uh, Infosys Cognizant uh, or say uh, SAP, IBM, so they prefer that. So they need a very structured kind of a, uh, details where uh, rather than you, they giving you some training, uh, looking at this itself, they should represent that, yeah, this guy knows or this uh, person knows what he's actually doing. So that is very essential. So these are the three different types. One is chronological, second one is functional, and third one is targeted. So chronological uh, like is more about like uh, mentioning the details in an ascending order. And there is a other term called reverse chronological. Reverse chronological is mentioning the details from the descending order. Descending order in the sense the last uh, uh, like experience that which you have. Say for an example, if I am currently work, uh, working in uh, uh, Cognizant, uh, the first uh, detail that I would have mentioned under the work experience is reverse chronological. That is now. And uh, below to that your previous experience. And uh, uh, when we talk about functional, uh, that is more about the specific domain. Uh, they don't concentrate much about the uh, uh, every operation that which you are doing under different companies, two or three companies. You just mention the work experience separately. I will show you examples, you will have a better idea. So you will mention all the uh, experiences alone, work experiences separately. Uh, like say uh, two, three companies wherever you have worked uh, and mentioning the timeline, 2016 to 18, 2018 to present date, like that. And uh, below to that, uh, you will just mention roles and responsibilities. So the entire four to five years, wherever you have worked and what are the key operations that which you have done, you will just mention everything within the roles and responsibilities. So that is functional. Only to the functions what you have actually worked on, you will just mention everything under roles and responsibility. Third one is targeted. Targeted is actually preferred now in industry. The reason being, maybe at an entry level, they don't give uh, so much attention where you are uh, using which kind of a resume or uh, CV. But... Um, for experienced professional targeted resumes will fetch more interview calls. That is the first hurdle that people are facing. Um, many are saying that, uh, see Amazon there is say uh, X opening and uh, you are reading many uh, news lines, uh, 50,000 uh, entry level graduates that they are hiring. Uh, there is it's, there is no sampling behind it. They are just giving a random number. You do not know for which domain they are hiring, which location they are hiring, what is the CTC. There is no details that is already projected in uh, newspapers and also in other publications. So then they are just giving you certain numbers what the company is planning to do. So from your perspective, like say if you are very much focused about say going in, the, in a UI UX kind of a design kind of a platform, uh, this targeted resume how it will help you is that you can show your portfolios. Like say once you publish some uh, website articles or once you design a website, uh, those portfolios that 
if you are attaching or you are mentioning that resume then the person who when you are applying for a ui kind of a job they will really know yeah he is specifically interested in this domain and he has already worked on that so that is targeted so if you are working in a python platform or say in a android kind of a development platform where you want to work at that time this will be very uh, helpful uh, the reason being rather than just mentioning all the details uh, it is actually good that uh, you target a specific company or a domain or the nature of work i'm saying so if you do that and accordingly you uh, paraphrase your sentences or uh, give a gist about what you have done or the courses what you have undergone so those things once you do it uh, uh, it will really be the apt fit they will technically say uh, technically say it as cultural fit it's actually a very loose term that companies are using but i'm just saying like it, it is more of a, a, a specific terminology where uh, uh, they prefer people from uh, like specific backgrounds and the uh, previous projects and uh, platform that which they have worked on if you talk about targeted resume so once you are applying for specific roles and companies ensure that you prefer using targeted resumes and um, so these these are the specific tips when we talk about resume so summary is a very essential the reason being if you are writing uh, three or four uh, lines below to it so for you at an entry level as i said career objective is very essential make sure that uh, every word what you are coining in that uh, two two line kind of a phrase uh, it it actually matches to what you are actually applying there are sorry uh, there are people where uh, if they are applying for a mechanical engineer job they will just uh, mention it as uh, uh, aspiring for a uh, entry level uh, uh, like a role uh, at a esteemed uh, company or in an esteemed uh, uh, mnc uh, like mentioning that they they, they don't give a, a general background of which role or which uh, engineering pla platform they are in so if you are in a, from a software engineering platform and you can actually uh, mention that uh, an aspiring uh, software engineer graduate or a software engineer uh, a student uh, looking for a specific role or say a specific um, domain in a uh, esteemed mnc so see these are some small sentences that gives different value so a mechanical engineer if he is mentioning this entry level uh, graduate looking for a uh, coming from a mechanical background looking for a job in it company means it doesn't resemble anything rather than it is there, there is a, a phase that many mechanical engineers or automobile electronics they are coming into it but he is mentioning himself as a mechanical student or a graduate but he is specifically mentioned that looking for a job in it company so there is no correlation between that so even for seeing the first sentence he might get rejected so don't allow uh, the possibilities of you, you getting rejected by putting these phrases so only ma'am was specifically mentioning that uh, there are uh, many common patterns that sh when she was reviewing your uh, resume she can find it see there are 80 to 90 percent it will be similar but what differences or uniqueness that you add to a profile will fetch you the job that is the only difference there and uh, as i said only 6 seconds a person is taking for uh, uh, like uh, seeing the resume uh, irrespective of any level if you are an entry level or an experienced professional whatever may be no nobody will have time to actually go through it so as i first mentioned that quote uh, this will be a direct uh, specification so even before you going the resume will speak for you and be very careful even if you are going for an off site uh, like off campus kind of a drive uh, if you are applying for, in say nokri or in linkedin some other kind of a portal uh, you just imagine while going in an on campus interview they are doing the job for you like they are uh, going talking to the companies they are coming for you. you you just want to attend those interviews and if you are getting selected you are getting the offer so it's a very structured pattern so if you are applying some job in nokri even for internship or even for a, a full time kind of a role you just imagine they have not seen you in person okay see that is good way good thing in one way there will be no biases in that in respect to color and other kind of problems that is different but my point is that resume is just a document that you are uploading in these portals so you to get a call you just imagine what you mentioned there based on that only they are going to call you it is not about seeing some ex he studying in uh, uh, say this ex institute see institute has a value but end of the day like it is more about your individual profile what you are doing that will reflect uh, when you are applying especially in this job portal so you be very careful while you are doing this work and um, uh, like as i said uh, specifically this is more about the uh, other uh, topics is more about uh, experience professional roles and responsibilities as i said it should be very crisp and it should be to the point uh, kindly i would say like even in terms of going forward in your career 
what you've done kindly mention it don't overwrite things or don't mention things that you entirely don't know any subject about there are people who don't know anything about network uh, protocols and everything they will mention it as in uh, say technology friend the ccn pcc and what are with the network routing switching everything they would mention but if you ask even a basic question in routing they will not know say ipv4 ipv6 what they are working on so that gives a direct bad impression to the person who is asking question see what you mention and you don't know you don't know anything about it so to the point if you really don't know something neglect it it is not end of the world but whatever you are mentioning ensure that everything is correct and everything that you know that is very essential even contact details once you are mentioning i think people will always say you uh, like uh, obviously now you have mobile number so plus 91 and you can use a sequence when we talk about your uh, email id uh, just giving uh, uh, 965 ramu uh, at gmail.com like maybe for your personal details you can give, give those details but the seeing a person's email id that will give be a reflection where see what there is a, a terminology where he is giving numeric with uh, uh, like say uh, name uh, it's not like you have access in gmail i'm not saying that uh, 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 the other combinations doesn't work but i'm saying this like you can mention at least to a certain degree say for an example uh, ramu october like oct for an example he is born in that month So that gives rather than number that will give a phrase. So at least that is professional. Or say Aishwarya dot uh, g at uh, gmail dot com, something like that. So that will give you a professional status where these are small things. Maybe from you at a student level you will not notice it, but from uh, uh, experienced professional or from a technical manager level they will see these things. What are the small things that you are doing mistake? And always remember. the probability of you losing losing a job are in these specific details they will actually know these details they'll frame it but they will not disclose to you once they are giving ratings taking five to six interviews and if there is just two positions how they are actually discarding people say similar to a super singer if we talk in a real time example the small note what a person is doing at the final level in that way only they are getting rejected not getting the first prize or second prize in a competition so similar to that these are some small things especially uh, i will come to the last part that is proof reading like don't make any grammatical error that is the worst thing that a person can do uh, especially from engineering uh, background i will say so ensure that uh, uh, like you don't do any spelling mistakes even a small spelling mistake uh, that, that will not reflect to you but other person when he is seeing he will really feel bad about it uh, why he is doing like that so that last one as is mentioned as uh, proof reading that is only not doing any specific mistakes so once you mentioning this amazing words i would have mentioned as increased uh, like reduced uh, improved uh, so these are some specific terms why i mentioned is that uh, uh, like you can mention this in your project like if you are uh, doing a team kind of a work and if you are the lead for the two or three members you can mention that like a leading a team or co- collaborating with a team of three members and doing that and uh, uh, you can't mention increased uh, then uh, or, uh, like initiate uh, initiated you can mention achieved you can mention maximized you can mention trained you can mention so these are some terminologies where uh, you can actually uh, like mention in your objective and also your projects so that you see a little bit about your leadership skills that uh, the, what you have done if you are working together as a team and uh, one specific uh, when i um, as i am talking about collaboration just remember one thing even when ma'am was saying about uh, like uh, our uh, studying when uh, like we completed i completed in 2015 my ug level uh, graduation so at that time i still remember in 2014 when i was in third year uh, there were uh, from uh, our seniors from our college every weekend or say in alternative weekends at least half an hour something they uh, come to our place and they'll actually give ideas about their interview experiences and other kind of programs their main point what they will really directly say is that don't feel the other person who never you are studying as a competition always remember that ultimately you are going to get a job somewhere if you are really good in your technical expertise and uh, like if you are able to uh, like do a coding at a very high level there are so many demanding jobs in market we generally at a collaborative level what you know just share to that other person and what he knows do it once you have this kind of a bonding only together you can actually learn uh, that that is the main problem at say uh, at, at that age or at that level i would say because we feel insecure okay see this xr we will get a job okay it is good but, but insecurity i'm not saying wrong as a human being you will have it but the problem is that once you have this notion ultimately what it will lead you is that you will see everybody as your competitor rather than a friend or rather than a person who can who whom which you can actually learn so 
kindly shift over that mindset that uh, being from only competitive see competition is required i'm not saying this wrong but be at a group kind of a competition ensure that two three people are say in a group of people you grow together that will lead you to get even a better job and if you believe it or not now in industry especially in it through references only many are getting job rather than applying through job portals and other thing at every i'm not saying just to build friends for this references don't take me in that wrong meaning i'm just saying in a way that that reference is even at the point when you're in a crisis that friend might help you or at that time it will he might give you the respect to job or he can refer you somewhere so that help even without your knowledge one once you build a bond with people only you will really get to know their value at a, a long time so that that point i just want to specifically mention uh, because at this timeline when you go for an interview your mindset will be like that uh, like okay third company is going second company is going till now i didn't get placed see that fear will be there because individually now money is very essential in everybody's life i'm not saying it is wrong but give importance to that collaborative learning because once you have that mindset even at the work level you will be very good to people and you will learn quickly with people rather than you learning by your own self so a uh, developed that habit it will really help you in long term and uh, this is actually an infographics resume so infographic resume as i said uh, this will actually touch about uh, like as i said uh, um, this one second yeah and see these are some icons uh, as by name now you, now there is so many platform you will have seen it so infographics something where you, you mentioned the uh, ventures like uh, uh, your education uh, contact and so with low cost so that is more into the infographics and uh, no, as this is a and, uh, common no, template what, what i mentioned template, what, what I yeah. so this one thing so this is actually a website where uh, i have posted some common uh, questions once you attend for the final level matter you so once you go through that you will get an idea like, what are the general questions that what are you looking at uh, hr and uh, when they are so uh, i just so, share you uh, one i just share you one sample sample I hope that. Uh, I hope that's a bit. Uh, is it visible? So when you see the visible, ah, is it visible now? Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, see, so, uh, uh, see, uh, uh, madam, sorry. Uh, could you put it on mute, madam? It is coming back. Sir. Okay. Thank you. so uh, as i was like saying regarding to the resume see this is actually a resume so just a one page document here i took it as a sample from an an uh, on site website so i don't have the copyright for this just for uh, like understanding perspective and just showing to you so here he is clearly mentioned his name and below to this mechanical engineer so as you are from computer science and it can mentioned a software engineer so uh, here you can uh, or you can just mention a software okay software engineer can mention here, uh, from my perspective i'm just saying you uh, generally don't put photo uh, maybe uh, i do not know regarding the college rules if you are specifically asking it is okay but if, if you are down the line maybe for applying in nokri or maybe for an on, on campus drive if there is an option that you can put photo or not uh, photo don't put photo that is my opinion why because there is so many gender biases and also there is so many race biases that people are, people are actually having we do not know but the mind of people like where there is a possibility and i have seen many situations where uh, looking at the photo there is so many discrepancies happening so generally it is avoidable if it is very much essential and it is compulsory put the photo okay and here if you could see uh, they have clearly mentioned the uh, social websites wherever that they are they have been uh, like uh, indulged in say facebook uh, uh, then instagram uh, then google plus google plus now it is more of an obsolete kind of a software many are not using Uh, twitter then uh, uh, linkedin so i'll touch up on linkedin i'll just show you one thing then i'll touch up on linkedin see linkedin is a very essential platform now uh, at this kind of a level where uh, once you uh, uh, like go for an interview because it is more of a professional platform where uh, 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 hrs are actually looking uh, it is not very i'm not saying it is not that is very essential but it is very good to actually have but from my opinion it is very essential so generally they will say it is okay but from my opinion this is generally essential to actually have a profile there 
in LinkedIn. So it is more of a professional platform. See, if you talk about Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram and all, it is more of a social website where uh, it is more, uh, for more into the uh, personal side of things. So LinkedIn is more into the professional side. What you have done across the career from your schooling, college, your certifications, organizations, and uh, your volunteer activities, whatever you have mentioned. So those things you actually clearly mentioned there. Uh, so below to that, this is more about about me. So you are just giving a, a basic detail about yourself. So and here also, uh, it is good to not to mention your age. Uh, age is not very much essential. And uh, even the uh, if you if you have any passport, you can just pa you can just mention passport available. Don't mention any number there in your resume. Always remember it: passport, PAN, Aadhar. If somebody is asking you for proof, send them. Don't mention any number, any official number related to your credentials in your resume. That is not very good. And uh, even there are people who will actually mention the hobbies. See, hobbies is a very, uh, uh, I would say, a wrong thing where uh, many will do, uh, like mention it as a wrong side, especially at the entry level. They will mention it as gardening. Gardening is a good hobby. I am not saying it is wrong. But if somebody, see, hobby is something where that is more of a stress buster that you have outside your college or outside your learning side. So if you are, say, mentioning reading books, ensure that at, the, at least you read some book, at least one book or you know the author and you know the uh, story behind it. If somebody is asking at an HR interview, uh, like could you just give me, because you just say half an hour or 30, 25 minutes that interview, they don't have anything to speak. They will surely touch upon that hobby. If they ask about gardening, uh, you, you can't say, if you don't know anything, no, I'm just, I'll just water plants. You just think logically how much foolish it will be. Other aspects, everything you, you would have done extremely well. But the small thing, as I said, that matters a lot. So in gardening, you can say, see, there are so many uh, like um, uh, infrastructure based uh, real estate houses that, that they are building and within that houses now there is there is so much importance that is given given to gardening and also for recreation kind of aspects so i love that and i periodically update what is going in that industry so you can relate that that will have some sense to what you are actually talking about so i see gardening as an example reading books is the same thing uh, if they ask some book if you don't know they will specifically ask fiction or non fiction uh, everybody uh, will uh, say that they don't, they don't know even to distinguish this fiction or non-fiction. They will say if on a fictional level, they will say non-fiction book and vice versa. So, don't do these things. It will, as I said, whatever the details that you are mentioning, it has its own credential. So, be very specific to that. And as I said, career objective, now at entry level, you will have it. So, ensure that you put it in a very prompt manner. And as I said, ma'am and other uh, coordinators going forward, they will help you once you are doing that. And the uh, academic background uh, uh, that, as I said, related to bookmark, if you are getting very less, don't mention it. Just mention the uh, institute, even the location, and uh, the timeline. Uh, timeline is very essential from when and where you are actually doing. And below to that, you can mention the projects. Actually, here, this resume itself is wrong, in my opinion. But because academic background, you should just mention this part alone. Below to that, he can mention, similar to internship, he could have mentioned the projects. So, below to that, you can mention the project, what you have done, the, maybe the final level project or something. And ensure that you, sh you mention the timeline. Say, even one if you don't mention it is okay, but mention the years, 2020 to uh, 21, 21 to 22. So, that timeline you should mention, because that is the latest thing that you have done in your career. So, that is the reason time is very important there. Internship, as I said, here he has clearly mentioned, 2019 to 20, the company, what he has done that. Okay, and interest as it is an infographic resume, as I was touching upon, you can mention it as in symbols. But if they ask anything about that, even music is a classic example. Many will do wrong there. Uh, music, they will they'll say it as uh, whether you like classical or uh, whether you like jazz. There, there are so many differences even in music. Which singer you like? What is the latest movie that you saw? Because these are some specific questions, what I've seen at the entry level they're asking. Even an experienced professional, they don't give much importance to individual hobbies and all. Because end of the day, for them, they're technically good, they'll hire them. That is different. But for an entry level, they'll, they'll be very much uh, interested or uh, they'll have the inquisitiveness to know more about you. What you're uh, having the out-of-box kind of work that you're doing rather than your own... Uh, everyday routine uh, that which you are learning and uh, doing extra work so that is very essential and language skills you can mention like to what degree you are comfortable this uh, degree is showing to what degree you are fluent and uh, uh, yeah and uh, i just got a feedback generally that you are mentioning some wrong details in this technical proficiency section see always remember see these two are again wrong Proficient skills, technical proficiency, both are same there is no difference what, whatever he has mentioned here is again repeated here this itself is wrong 
So I am just giving you an example what is right and what is wrong even with this uh, format. So technical provisions both are same. He has put it in two different things. So uh, I will show you one more example that you can understand. Skills is something where which you are good in. Say MS Office or uh, rather than tool experience, this is the proficiency level. To what degree you are good in these tools. So these things you can mention. And uh, uh, as Ma'am was specifically saying, try to build your profile more. As I said, now see you are working in a virtual kind of a remote place. Uh, where you have more time externally, like say maybe I know the regular routine, uh, like um, internal exams will come. You have your own project work, internship, everything is there. But try to equip yourself in a different manner. The reason being that, uh, like say, uh, the, uh, for an example, I'm just saying you, a uh, person who is like uh, doing a content creation in a new YouTube, he is something different from the ex person what he is doing in every day. But because YouTube is a channel where it, it is, you, you cannot build in one day. It takes time and moreover, you, you should know the Indian about what is to be done, how the channels to be created, how videos to be projected and even if you are very good in talking in the video, indirectly that video will show you that, see, if he is talking something in this kind of a, a, a social media platform which is very huge in, in world, uh, obviously he has the communication skill. So you don't want to even prove your communication skill that you have good uh, skills in communication. That YouTube channel will project you that uh, uh, like uh, that you have this talent. Why? Because unless you don't have it, you will not start the channel and you will not have that motivation to do it. So it is not about likes. See, likes will give you more bandwidth and it will reach more audiences. That's it. Subscription will give you more audiences. I am saying it is an example. I am not saying YouTube is the only method that you should do. There are plenty of opportunities. You can do some freelancing projects uh, like even at uh, your firm, uh, like friends, uh, uh, like parents firm and you can mention that that you have undergone. These are some real time work that you are doing that is distinguishing from say X, Y, Z. Always remember it. There is a very wrong misconception especially maybe I don't want to talk about uh, at a state level issue but generally in our state generally I will say you. Uh, they, they prefer that even from a parenting state they prefer that mark is everything. I am not saying everybody is saying that but generally that is the mindset. See if you are getting even 70 as I said even if you are getting 7.5 or 80 that has a bearing only at an entry level. For an eligibility you are going. Internally they are, they are assigning, you, assigning you some work. Unless otherwise you are not skilled enough to do that work whatever mark that which you are giving, uh, you are getting in UG level or PG level that, that does not have any bearing. Mark is very essential at a consistent level to go to an entry level, that's it. Always remember it. It has value and always remember it is very good to uh, complete the course without getting any arrears. The reason being, there are opportunities where even you prefer to go because of that arrear eligibility, many are unable to apply even at a very later stage. So for that perspective alone, ensure that the academic side also don't lose it. Very important, but my originality of a person, I would say it is more about the other things that they are doing inside. And see, uh, I will give you one more example just for your uh, specification. Uh, there is a boon and bane that which we can actually say, it is more of a topic even in a GD level they might ask you. Uh, I would say data is both boon and bane in the current world, like it is good and bad. Why? Because with the internet now you have all access instantly in your hand, you don't want to go anywhere. Maybe at the time when uh, like uh, Shubha Madam was studying, at that time their method of study or even the uh, way of studying was different. Now slow and steady, even the last one and a half years disruption with COVID, you are learning everything remotely and you are adjusted to learning this kind of a platform. So you just imagine you are adjusting and you are, you are uh, getting used to new platforms of learning. So in, the, in that way, uh, as I was like specifically mentioning you that, be flexible to learn things, that is very essential and uh, uh, at a time of crisis, the different skills what you have, that will actually fetch you a job. So there is one common uh, statement uh, I would say is that be a generalist till 30 years of your age and be a specialist after 30 years of your age. The reason being 30 is just a number and this project thing but that is, that is more of a common metric you can mention. So that is something where from your say 23 or 22 whenever you are graduating till 7 years, you can learn general things from this different sites. You can work but you can learn general things. But once you go to that settlement kind of a phase, maybe post to 30, you should be specialized in one area. That way only you can cut short the competition. So give importance to that. As I was specifically referring about the data kind of uh, metric, what I was referring, you have everything in hand in terms of social media, you are connecting with friends on a regular basis, on a daily basis, even through phone, text message, there is ample kind of medium where you can connect. 
the only thing is that is more about your self interest to what degree i can equip myself even if you are uh, getting one year kind of a work in some software engineering kind of a role and if you are really not interested and uh, uh, especially if you want to start an enterprise maybe your own batch business or uh, your uh, like who or your friends business if you want to assist them you just think about it the extra skills what you are learning that will be a platform or that will be a ladder that which you can use at the time whenever you are going for that kind of a role suddenly you can't go for those roles unless you don't equip yourself so at every level upskilling is very essential it is i as i said it is a more of a, a common terminology that companies are using upskilling the upskilling is more about like periodic updates one is more about knowing about your industry as there is so much disruptions happening in industry ai there is so much evolution and you, you will obviously see so much advertisements coming for data science big data machine learning see there is a demand for these technologies i am not saying uh, like if once you go there only your life will be uh, very smooth it is not like that see there are different proficiencies that people are have they are very good in software domain in a particular platform say in android development they can choose that path but the demand supply kind of uh, uh band but only uh, if you go for these uh, uh, skills or this platform you'll get more jobs in market so only they're advertising that but uh, as i said it is not about just to confirm yourself ensure that you learn and uh, see don't take it as a suggestion or uh, something where i'm keeping up talk, talking about more about learning and i i don't want to bore you in that way i'm just saying this is the reality about industry you ask any of your senior who is working in any platform the person who is getting a consistent job in an industry are the person who are upgrading on a periodic basis and the person who are going down the ladder is the person who's uh, like more about just being saturated just knowing one thing and just continuing that so the, i'm just stressing the need of your competition in 2025 or 26 once you're going to the fourth year or fifth year in your career the words that which i'm saying now i'm not saying that is directly applicable but you, you once you see the market how it is revolving you'll really understand what i'm i'm trying to say for that reason only i'm stressing these things do these extra things so that will make you at a better level in your life going forward that is the main thing yeah and uh, this is the cv so i think this is visible right yes sir okay. so see uh, this is, as i said this is one one page uh, document so this is resume and uh, this document what i'm showing this is cv so this is the general template that colleges will prefer and you are using it so uh, like your name your phone number your uh, contact details as i said be professional mentioning the uh, email id and object was very important and uh, these are the general details like uh, where uh, even at a ug level when i was doing the same thing this was a template that which they were having so uh, the college and other details uh, everything that you will be knowing it and uh, like specifically uh, like uh, jetra madam was referring that see here there is a common error that which i think many are using and even i was doing that to be honest with you see clearly mention the software proficiency if you are working in os platform men- mention that xp uh, linux and other things uh, don't just mention software proficiency ms office ms excel ms uh, uh, like word see ms office is a plat uh, like a product where everything is coming together in ms office there are people who will mention ms office ms excel ms word what is the logic within office everything is coming so see these are small things that we can find error and even programming languages sir there are nobody will mention under operating system there are many people who will mention c c++ i'm saying i'm not saying everybody will do it but these are small things without without your knowledge you might do it so mention clearly these things database obviously ms uh, sql and uh, other kind of platform in the technologies these are the platform and if you use any tools mention it uh, tools you can mention say uh, say for mechanical engineer they use creo cred and uh, uh, you guys will use uh, sorry cad uh, you guys will use um, Uh, adobe xd for web designing and uh, even for software development projects uh, through github there are many open source tools that which people are using so those things you can use it as tools uh. so below to that project, project details as i said the mention timeline this is very essential from to when to when you are mentioning and under the name of the project uh, team members you can mention so if you are working in a three or four member team that will you can say at a very professional level together we did it and it was very uh, like interesting Uh, so called uh, the blah 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 you can mention when you once you are taking that interview that is uh, that will give you more aid rather than doing a, a individual project as when you work in a team um, people will prefer that and the description of project it is um, your own interest you can mention or not to mention but if you just want to i don't know uh, see generally don't mention it as three or four paragraphs you can just mention in two lines that is enough 
and uh, give more importance to your speaking. See, uh, like uh, I, this, this is a fundamental topic. Okay, I'll just finish this and I'll say about it. Personal profile is something where, uh, as I said, gender it is optional. But if there is a uh, procedure that if you want to follow, mention gender. But you can mention that is not a, a problem. Uh, then uh, uh, like date of birth, religion kindly don't mention. As I said, there are so many biases. Nationality, okay, it's not in uh, like uh, essential. See, all, you are attending only in India. You, you, once you go to foreign, at least you can mention that is not essential. Martial status, obviously, 90 to 95 percent people will be in single only at this age. So don't mention single and all. Language is known, okay, that is good. Uh, you can mention and address also just. Keep it very crisp. Your uh, number of your place and uh, your street, uh, then Kwanatur or C road, whatever maybe, then pin code. That's it. Contact number again. Don't mention here. If you have ex alternate contact number, mention here. Already you mentioned contact number here. Then why again repeating the same thing? Don't mention here. You can just mention alternate contact number. You can do some other number. So as I said, the uh, martial state is not required. Religion not required. Uh, then even gender is optional. You can mention. But as I said. Give importance to the span, passport, and other and all. Don't mention number. If you mention other, colon, available. That is enough. Don't mention any important credential in your resume. I'm not saying in the resume anywhere. See, even for interviews, there are some companies, even before you're going for a job, they'll ask all the details. I'm not saying post selection. I'm saying even at the, before attending interview. See, logically, you think there is some next person who's calling from any big company. That is okay. But why you should disclose your details to some next person? That is not essential. So, if it is very essential, if it is a mandatory process, then you give. Don't mention your personal details outside anywhere. And uh, here for this pattern of CV, below to email, you can mention the LinkedIn and the Twitter uh, handle. That is uh, enough. That because now the socially connected world, the people prefer to have that. So, LinkedIn is a very essential platform. And uh, can you have at least one updated profile? Without mentioning your name, at least once you are free this month, uh, uh, try to ensure that there are so many uh, like... Udemy courses or say uh, YouTube videos that many tips that they are showing for doing anything in the world now. You can just click one link and see which, which is the most viewed link in YouTube. You just learn that uh, like uh, how to create a LinkedIn profile and just put the basic details at least. And you put the customized link here below to email. So that will give more of appealing factor that for people uh, like uh, looking at it. But in my opinion, LinkedIn profile is very essential if you build it in a proper way. And connections are very important there. And see, and below that, other details is certain uh, the activities, voluntary experiences, uh, then achievements if you did something. Uh, and at an entry level, this is very essential. For that, this reason only, I am saying periodically do some extra things. That is the main point here. Nothing other than that. If you do some uh, like activities like at intra college level, inter college level, those things that, that will be give a appealing factor. And any certifications or uh, like uh, 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 like uh, periodic internship that which you are doing in, in a remote way, you can mention that. And always remember now as there is so much platform for Udemy, Coursera, so many things, there is so much ample opportunity where you can certify yourself. So having certification is the need, I am not saying. I am saying that will give you a specific edge from any person in the industry or from your peer or whomever is learning any platform. Because this periodic certification, it is more of a uh, like um, uh, one bird, sorry, one shot, two bird concept. Uh, the thing is that it is more about self-motivating and uh, it is indulging you to learn yourself faster. Second thing is like at a resume level, once you project to the external employee, wherever you, you are actually having, say Amazon, IBM, I am saying about the cream companies. Those companies always remember, unless you are technically good, I am saying the cream layer, they will prefer those people. Even at a moderate level, if you are good, technically good, but if you have these extra skills, these companies prefer that. I am not saying at entry level, even down the line in the ladder. Maybe for a general IT companies or medium enterprises, if you okay, if you are just uh, wanting to have a common template and you just main, maintaining that without upgrading yourself, it is your own individual interest. But the stress I am giving is that once you go down the line and you want, once you have this aspiration of going for the screen companies rather than not for self boosting, I am saying even for the self satisfaction for going to these companies and working, those companies will specifically require having people with diverse environment. They keep on saying diverse rec recruitment, diverse recruitment, diverse recruitment is this. Diverse recruitment is not about gender, sex and so called other factors. That is not the case. Diverse recruitment is diverse skill set. That is a term that companies are using. So, remember that. And just one more thing. So, this is also one more sample where I can show you. 
like okay these are the basic details your name and uh, your basic details uh, work experience if you undergo here intern experience you can mention software proficiency uh, see clearly this guy has mentioned office suit ms office this is perfect and below that your interest area of interest which subject do you like more so this area of interest why it is very important at the entry level is that we will ask more questions in this area so if you really don't know anything about dbms kindly don't put dbms because many of my friends when i was studying dbms they casually put it they think that they ask only basic level questions no sql they ha ha ask at a very high level questions if you, if you go for an interview so don't just put for main sake iot if you don't know anything about iot kindly don't mention it as iot iot okay we know right okay it is a uh, like a demanding platform machine learning is a demanding platform but if you don't know anything about even at the basic level if you mention the area of interest then if you if you ask any one or two questions if you don't know you will get rejected so don't put anything that is not related or that you don't know more things about in mini project and uh, here see he didn't mention the time name mention that and the industry visit obviously you do in your second year and third year in plan training workshop so this is the basic details paper presented it, it is having an additional advantage if you do it why because paper, see paper presentation something that is little bit unique from other things is that you are exposing to some a new college or a new environment and you are showcasing your skill see it is not the greatest thing that if you get the first prize in life even if you get in third or even a uh, like a participation certificate you have done something different from some other person so be self motivated you have done something new that other that other person doesn't do it so have some self initiative do these programs that will give you more self interest rather than just go go for an interview and uh, achievements obviously and specifically people coming from a sports kind of a background uh, this is a very uh, nice place that you can showcase your talent so people doesn't give only to importance to the other sections if you are okay in this and if you are very good in this as i said the diverse skill set they will prefer you and the personal trait okay it is okay to mention it is not very essential see as i said bad me <laughs> it just came me uh, like actively i'm playing volleyball see even volleyball it is very good thing why because you show extra skill a sportsman kind of a skill so rather than just being genuine say uh, reading books uh, magazines and uh, like seeing uh, videos you know say put it as seeing videos what videos see uh, this videos is a normal thing everybody is doing now in world that doesn't have any bearing so playing cricket something like that but you should know something about it. cricket means they can ask you uh, what happened like last month uh, like uh, did india, uh, india lose in the third test and who was the best bowler in that uh, series and what is going on whether uh, uh, like what, what, what do you uh, know about football like whether uh, cristiano ronaldo has transferred to manchester united again so this is the latest news that has come out in newsletter so you should know about it what is going on there and as you said martial status not required and other things you can just mention and this read and write also it's optional it is not very essential you should put under a language section and i hereby declare we can mention and uh, these are the basic details so i think that overall you would have got some ideas related to this and just one more thing i just want to show you just one second yeah so here if you see as i said you can pop into this link and you can see the specific hr interview questions that uh, i have generally posted so i read before 4 3 years I, i think so i couldn't recollect so but this is more of a common thing wherever you apply not only at entry level whichever experience band that you are in you can refer this i would have posted only the questions maybe for answers or for different session even for linkedin building profile if there is a chance we might connect again but we will see going forward we will see but this is the link kindly you can go through it i will pass this pdf to madam uh, post this session so maybe if they are able to circulate it or only the links alone they can show it to you maybe through whatsapp group or somewhere through mail so that those links alone you can read it after some time uh, so maybe for reference madam can have this ppt and for you guys they can just give the links alone uh, whatever you mention and these are the references links like where for resume writing other tips rather than what i said extra tips where little bit different or something specific they want to give you can go through these links sir and these are some resume building websites so already i think obviously obviously you guys would have seen here so these are some specific uh, uh, websites where you can build the resume from scratch free version and also paid version is there see i don't entertain paid version 
but if you feel comfortable of using something customization if you want to little bit more uh, be appealing you can use it see generally i would say the outside parameter of the style and other things it has some value i'm not saying it doesn't have value it has some value but what you have in your brain and also in your profile that matters a lot so ensure building that more having that with this customized and also this graphics resume that will have uh, an additional advantage even while you are applying for experience level professional i don't entertain people having the, uh, the infographic resume maybe if you go to a person one on one and if you want to show a resume to them an infographic resume they can show to them why because now companies are using at software applicant tracking system so it's actually a software where once you upload the resume by itself an automation robot where it uh, like filters the details and it will have its own template that will give to the recruiter especially in amazon unilever these are some specific companies where they are using there are many companies and the same some examples so if you put some infographic resume the uh, the so called ai bot it doesn't recognize what you mentioned in the graphics so if you have a text so just mentioning even the border lines it doesn't recognize it so the text alone only it's taking it so generally have a template but it's just customizable and just uh, give the font and font i would recommend arial and or cambria arial or cambria is generally good once you project the resume and uh, font size is 12 maybe for headlines alone or uh, the other parts so 14 you can keep but for general template you can have it as 12 so arial or cambria as font uh, style and uh, the size you can uh, have it as 12 so there is general details and um, if you want to connect maybe down the line uh, like in the social website where if i could help you in some way maybe if i could uh, just connect there and i can give you some extra ideas other than this and going forward if you just want to uh, communicate with me or to connect with me you can use this handle twitter is this handle and linkedin is this handle so as i said i'll uh, post it to ma'am over an email or through whatsapp so ma'am will have the template this links along whichever that you want uh, the previous things the building websites and also the other links whatever i mention that the madam will circulate to you in the forum where you can go through and uh, you can upload yourself uh, when you are going for the interview and uh, so i com- complete more of the interview session see so just one thing i just want to reiterate this more of a session where i talked about resume and i gave some specific, specific ideas about interview preparation so i just want to mention one thing uh, so for any job opportunity down the line don't take it as a hurdle or if you fail in some place don't think that it is end of the world see everything is a learning experience i'm not saying attending 10 companies and getting rejected is learning experience don't take it in that way but there was an example even when i was studying like in the third year one of my senior he took up 45 interviews i'm honestly saying you i'm not saying just for uh, like name sake or for motivating you 45 interviews he took and in the 46th company after trying Uh, maybe six months, even post to college, he got that uh, offer, and he worked there for one or one and a half years, and now he is working in Infosys, I think. So it is not like everything like okay now if you want uh, like if you don't get it, everything is there. Interview is a step where at an inter level, um, uh, like teachers are there to mold you, so you can groom yourself, and at every point of time, learn with everybody, collaborate, and. Uh, Uh, ultimately everybody i hope that and i'll give the best wishes at uh, at every level uh, you will be successful in whichever phase that you are actually going on so hope to connect with you in a different session and uh, i thank uh, uh, both uh, madam dr madam shubha and uh, um chaitra um, madam for having this uh, session so thanks a lot guys if you have any queries that alone uh, madam will try and it can say thank you sir Gratitude is gratitude is one of the greatest gifts that the parent the parent gives. Now I call up I call up Mohan Raj, Mohan Raj, sir, PSC Jitendra, to give both of them. Okay, hello everyone. It's really great that this webinar turned out to be very successful. Yeah, I am Mohan Raj, and I am here to present the vote of thanks to the people who made this event successful. First of all, I, I would like to thank our HOD Ma'am, Dr. Shubha, for her enthusiastic support, and also I thank our chief guest, Mr. Anand Bhatmanabhan, for his precious knowledge with all of us. And also, I would like I would like to thank our students for for their valuable support. Thank you, thank you, Anand. Thank you, sir. As we have come to the final closure of the event, I thank each and every one for staying with us all this time. 
थैंक यू